So now that we have all the buttons and the LED stuff selected, we need to add the screen and the SPO2 module. And to do that, we need to make custom parts. So I'm going to go ahead right now and save the schematic that we've been working on. And I'm gonna go back to the main page for the KiCad project. And I'm going to go to the symbol editor, which is right over here. So this right here is where we're going to define our custom part. And to do that, we need to first click on file, click on new library. And we're going to add a new library table and we're gonna make it project. If you were going to use this for many projects, you might consider adding this to the global table, which will follow it along to new projects you do in the future. But for now, let's just set project, which means that these parts will only exist in this project. And I'm just gonna give this a name SPO2 stuff. Press enter to save it. Now we have our new library over here. So now with our new library, I'm going to right click on it and click new symbol. And now we're going to give it a name. And I'm gonna call it the MAX30102 underscore module. And the rest of these options we can just leave unchanged and click okay. And right now we have a giant letter U, but this is where we're going to define what our symbol looks like. So now we need to give our symbol a shape and I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible and just make it a box. Uh, over here on the right hand pane, we have the add rectangle bo button. And normally you wanna make the part and scale it to the number of pins that the part has. In this case, the max module has five pins. So this box doesn't need to be very big. So I'm just gonna start over here, click, drag a box like that and click again. And I'll press escape. Then I can click on it and drag it and try and maybe uh, make it just a little bit bigger on one side, just to make it even. And there, that can be the basic shape for our symbol. If you wanna customize the appearance, you can right click on it, go to properties, and then you can do things with the background. You can do things with the, the line and you know make it sort of customize a little bit to your heart's content. I'm just gonna leave it as default right now. So now we're gonna add some pins. We're gonna go up to the right hand side, click on this button here, add pin. This will bring up the pin properties window. And this is where we will define what the pin does. And now we need to look at what the module looks like. So this is the module here that we'll be using. And if we're going to have it say face right up where all the pins are at the top, let's just assume that pin number one is INT and then it'll be pin two, three, four, and five. So even though we're not going to use the INT pin, let's add it anyway. So I'm gonna go back to the editor here. I'm going to go up to pin name. I'm gonna say it's INT. And the next one down is the pin number, which is pin number one. And normally when you're defining a custom part, you would actually set it to the correct electrical type so you can reuse it in the future projects. But for this, we're not gonna use it. So I'm just gonna set electrical type, click on that, go down to unconnected, and then click okay. Now we have our pin. I'm going to line it up on the part right here. Make sure you have the end of that line connecting with the side of the part. Remember that the circle you see there is where we're going to click to add a wire. So I'm just going to line it up right about there and click. And there you go, you've added one pin. The next pin, pin number two is SDA. I'm gonna click on the pin button again, just type in SDA. The next the pin number is going to be pin number two. And we're going to change the electrical type to bi-directional because it's gonna be sending and receiving data on this pin. Click okay, put it on the board. Do the next pin, this is SCL, which is pin number three. This is going to be an input only. Click OK, that can go right there. Our next pin is going to be ground. So I'm gonna click on this. It's gonna say GND for ground, pin number four, electrical type. I actually forget if ground should be output or input. This might cause an issue with the DRC later, but we're going to ignore that for now and come back to it. So I'm just gonna say this is a power output. And if, uh, if it's not, then we'll come back and change it. And then finally, we want to add the power input of VCC, which is pin number five. We're gonna set this to a power input click and add it just like that. Now I'm going to make two changes just because normally this is how symbols are defined and it makes it a bit easier to work with. Ground and VCC should be at the top and bottom of the symbol. So I'm going to click on this on ground, drag it over here, press R to rotate and just connect it down there. And I'm gonna take VCC, move it up here, rotate a couple times and stick it right there. This is optional, but I recommend you do it anyway, just because it makes things cleaner when you go to start drawing wires and stuff. 
And of course, this is just a symbol. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can make it shaped however you want it to be. Um, but generally keeping things consistent is a good idea when you're doing engineering work. So let's leave this window open and let's go back to our schematic editor. And the schematic editor will have known and seen that we have created a new part. So we can go over to the component search over here and we're gonna type in the MAX30102. And down here we have the max module. Click okay. And now we can place it on the board. Uh, one thing I did forget to do though is give it a name. You can see the Arduino here has a, a label that shows what it is. So I'm gonna go back to the symbol editor, right click, go to symbol properties, go to value, just type in max 30102, click okay. And we can just move this out of the way and click save. And then go back to the schematic editor, right click on our part, go down to update symbol, make sure that value is selected over here and then click update and then click close. And now we have a name that's associated with our symbol. But now we also need to make a symbol for the screen. And this is the screen we'll be using, which is the SSD 1306 OLED display module. This is the pinout for it. So it's ground is number one, SDA is number four. So going back to the symbol editor, I'm going to right click on SPO2 stuff, new symbol. I'm gonna call it the SSD 1306 and click OK. Now I would suggest again that you pause the video and try making this one yourself. It's exactly the same steps we used to make the max module. This time it just has fewer pins and this is the pin out here. Just assume that the pins go from one, two, three, four. So ground is number one, SDA is number four and just try and see if you can make it. Okay, so just like before, we're going to start by adding a box, just like this. Now we're going to add some pins. I'm gonna make the first one GND, which is pin number one, which is a power output, and stick that right down there. Next is VCC, which is pin number two, power input, rotate it and stick it right there. And then pin number three is SCL, which is a input only. Stick it right here. And finally, we're gonna do pin number four, which is SDA, which is bi-directional. Pin number four, click okay, and right, just like that. And before we forget, right-click on it, symbol properties, value, SSD 13006. Click okay, let's move this out of the way a little bit, and then click save. So now we're gonna go back to our schematic, add a new part. This is going to be the SSD 1306. Click okay. And there's our part. So later on, I might go back and make these the same size, but for now, I'm just going to finish up the schematic and we can be done with the schematic portion of this project. So now let's start by adding the power stuff, which you know how to do already. So I'm just gonna do that pretty quickly. Add ground, one here. So we've got two more wires to add, which is the SDA and SCL lines. You do wanna make sure you don't swap these pins around. What we wanna do is we wanna have A5 connect to SCL and A4 connect to SDA. So I'm going to click A5, this pin right here, drag a wire to SCL, click, and then connect like that. And for the other module, I'm gonna start there, click on that, and drag a wire down and merge these wires together like that. And for A4, I'm going to draw a wire like this, click and then have it sit over here and then join another wire just like that. So now we're almost done. We only have one more thing we should do, which is tell the editor that we're not going to use all the rest of these pins. So over here on the right hand side we have here, which is the no connect signal. We're going to click on that. We're going to start clicking all these pins that we're not going to use. One thing to make it faster is you can press the insert key on your keyboard and it will automatically place another one on the next pin down. So I can do you know, connect there and then just press insert a bunch of times. And then one more down here. And there you go. That's our finished schematic. One final thing we should do though, is we should run the ERC, which is the electrical rules checker up here at the top bar. It's this button here, click on that, click run ERC. And we have a couple errors. It didn't like that we made ground to power output, so there needs to be a power input. So that's an easy fix. That actually does not affect our circuit, but it's just going to make it a nicer for KiCad to work with. So to fix that, I'm gonna click close, go back to our schematic editor, click on the pin, right click, go to properties, and change this from power output to power input. 
click OK, save, go to the other module, double click on it, right click on our ground, again go to properties, power output to power input, click OK, save, and go back to the schematic. Now we just need to update the parts, just click on that, right click, update symbol, click update and close, and then do the same for the other one, update, update, close. And now we can open up the ERC again, click on delete all markers, and then click run ERC. So we did have one error with the Arduino saying that the ground pin here was not actually being is not actually being driven by a ground symbol. We can ignore this error. It's not actually a problem. What's more important is that these symbols are connected to this label and that's what's happening. So we don't have to worry about it. So now go up to the side here and save it and take a breather, pat yourself on the back. You've successfully made a schematic in KiCad, which is the first step on making a PCB. The next step is going to be choosing our parts and defining the footprints for these, which we're actually going to put onto the board. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.